I would like to offer you my congratulations on your novel resolution to the Abraxas conjecture, since you've published your solution. Several circles within academia have seen fit to cast doubt. Greetings, I'm Cyber Erectus. Here is my review of the Apple TV Plus Isaac Asimov's Foundation Season 1 Episode 5, titled Upon Awakening. First, I would like to give a standard spoiler alert disclaimer. If you haven't watched Episode 5 yet, please pause now and watch the show and come back to hear the review later. Thank you. Now here is a brief recap of the episode 5. We see in the past on Waterworld Planet Synax, Gaul Dornick, as a religious acolyte, is forced to witness and participate in the execution of her former teacher, who was caught salvaging books from a condemned university. Disillusioned with Synax's religious purge of scientists, Gaul educates herself in secret and enters a galactic empire-wide mathematics competition. In the present, Dornick awakens after 34 years of cryosleep and finds herself aboard the fully automated starship Raven, which had been prepared by Rach Foss. She learns that Rach was executed for murdering Hari Selden, and the galaxy believes her to be an accomplice to the crime. Heartbroken, Gaul tries to commit suicide. Suddenly, the ship's gravity abruptly flips due to course correction. She falls and drops the knife. Dornick remembers her teacher's last words to her, and she awakens with new hope. After deducing that the Raven is bound for Hari's homeworld of Helican, she stumbles across a flickering hologram of wounded yet seemingly alive Hari. At Terminus, we see the Imperial jumpship Aegis enters the planetary orbit and detects the Anacreon presence. Commander Dorwin of the Aegis is informed of the captive Farakian and demands to speak with her, causing the Foundation staff to bring her from her cell to Foundation Tower. Once inside, Farah detonates a field disruptor bomb and disables Terminus City's force field fence and reveals her true purpose is to destroy the Foundation in revenge for the Empire's neutron bombing of Anacreon, which had killed her parents and brother. The episode ends with the Anacreon soldiers storming the city and their flak cannon shoots down the Aegis. This episode has three acts. Now let's delve into them in more detail. The set production at the beginning of the episode is really gorgeous. The vivid purplish hue of Synex Waterworld is visually magnificent. The boats in the night scene are beautifully shot too. However, in my opinion, Episode 5 is probably the weakest in the season so far. The first 20 minutes could be cut down to 10 minutes. Since we already know about Gal Dornick's backstory of Synax's religious inquisition from earlier episodes, we've heard about the unfathomable purge of scientists on Synax's backwater from Episode 1's expositions. Hence, there is no real need to show it again amidst a rush job. There simply isn't enough time given to the audience in order to establish deeper emotional connections with Gaul's awakening from a religious acolyte to a heretical mathematician. Fortunately, in the in the second act, we finally see Gaul's stasis pod docks with the Raven ship. It's my favorite part of the episode. It gives me a HAL 2001 Space Odyssey vibe. Gaul's lonely mood and the ship's creepy atmosphere are beautifully portrayed. In the third act of the episode, we're back to Terminus for some high kinetic actions. Unfortunately, there are some problems about cinematography pertaining to proper lighting. These problems are especially noticeable during the poorly lit close quarter combat scenes between Salver Hardin and Farah Kian. In addition, there are some weird day-to-night continuity issues when the Anacreon warriors finally breach the force field fences. Suddenly day becomes night in a jiffy. The Terminus battle scenes are hilarious. It's almost like watching Keystone Cops or Star Wars Stormtroopers. Nobody knows how to shoot straight. There is a funny scene involving a parody line on par with Star Trek's Dr. McCoy. A Foundation Encyclopedist shouts out, I'm a scientist, not a fighter. While he dodges haplessly, the set-piece battle scenes are full of illogical holes. For instances, why do Anacreon warriors need to run and charge with melee combat while shooting at Foundation colonists with long-range blasters? Why does the Imperial jumpship Aegis not just stay in orbit? 
and send in its landing shuttles, as already shown in Episode 1's Synax scene. Logically speaking, interstellar jumpships don't usually enter the planetary atmosphere. That's why shuttles and space elevators exist in the first place. Furthermore, Salver Hardin in fact tries to warn Aegis Commander Dorvin about Anacreon's potential gambit, and immediately the calm is jammed by Anacreons. Still, Aegis doesn't raise up its force shield or engage any tactical maneuver. Maybe it's like Hari Seldon's prediction that the Empire has become so complacent to the point of ineptitude. Instead of please respect and enjoy the peace, now we have no respect and enjoy the peace not. Nevertheless, the Foundation is still a terrific TV show so far. I'm eagerly awaiting for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this review. Till next time, goodbye. Kinetic weapon alert. Fire anti-missile. Too close for intercept.